Welcome to The Signal, our weekly tour through the hidden corners of Maryland's cultural landscape. I'm Lisa Morgan. We begin our program this week with a profile from producer Aaron Hankin. It's a story about fate, fortune, and one man's encounter with a very special musical instrument. Yeah, my name's uh, John Decker. Um, I'm 61. I live in Govins in uh, Baltimore, Maryland. In 1974, I was uh, doing some work for a friend of mine who had a house on St. Paul Street. Instead of cash, he, he he offered me the guitar. It's a 1931 National Resonator guitar. At that time, I really didn't play, but I sort of knew the value of it, so that's how I acquired it. I could play some chords and things like that, but I, you know, I wasn't like a, a musician or a guitar player. But just ha- cradling that thing, you know, I mean, the weight of it, uh, the, the way it sounded when you strummed the strings, you know, you, you could tell that, you know, this was a unique instrument. You know, it wasn't just a guitar. You know, it was a little daunting at first, you know what I mean? So, and again, I wasn't really thinking about becoming a musician or anything like that. You know, I was a working man at that time, and, um, didn't really have time for creative thinking, you know, I was just trying to pay the bills and stuff. So you have this guitar, it was kind of a conversation piece, but uh, it was kind of destined to just sort of end up on the shelf for a long time. Talk about, like, did you ever have any kind of musical education or anything like that? Actually, what had happened was um, <laughs> I started playing the guitar with my church. They had, a, uh, you know, like a pretty good worship band there, and... The guitarist there found out that I could play a few chords and things like that, and they were expanding. Our church was expanding, and they went to two services. And the guitarist didn't want to do both services, so she asked me if I was willing to learn their repertoire and, you know, be like the second guitarist. And I was thinking, man, you know, this is this is like a little stardom thing here for me. But I didn't realize how much work it was involved because I had to basically learn to play the guitar. So I, I studied with her for about six months, learning all the songs, you know, practicing on my own, and, and rehearsing with the music team. Now, you weren't playing this National no. Resonator guitar. What were you playing? At that time, I was playing um, on a Martin acoustic guitar, you know, plugged into, like, the, the sound system. Then I shifted over to um, an electric guitar because we started going more into, like, black gospel music. And it required more diverse, um, I called them jazz chords, because I had to get an encyclopedia and learn how to do them. And uh, that took me into a, a really neat direction, because I had to learn, you know, like music theory. And I was working with a music director that, that was really a good teacher, very patient, just going over different rhythms and stuff. And, you know, when to strike, you know, when to back off and stuff. So, yeah, it was, it was a great experience. October of 07, um, let me back up a little bit, uh, a couple months before October, I think it was in May, I uh, retired early from my work. And then, um, and tell me specifically what kind of work, I mean, you do a lot of different work. It sir. was like um, home improvement and um, rehabbing houses and, you know, doing uh, basically things that were too small for contractors to do, but I had the skill to do them. Replace windows, broken glass, door knob, you know, that kind of stuff, you know. And um, in October of 07, I was rehabbing a house in Penn Lucy, and uh, my hand slipped off of uh, a piece of floorboard that was cutting on a table saw, and I cut off three of my fingers, my first three fingers on my left hand. At that moment, you know, my whole life changed. You know, I was thinking, man, I'll I'll never play the guitar again. You know, I was just getting to the point where I was, you know, I, I, I could honestly say, yeah, man, I, you know, I, I think I'm a guitar player. I think I can do music now, you know? And uh, not only that, you know, everything that I did for my livelihood, man, you know, was laying in the palm of my hand, literally. At that point, I had to just let it go and uh, do what was necessary to survive, you know, gather stuff up, turn things off, you know, get help, and, and just go on. And then the healing process begins. 
you had got your fingers surgically reattached. Yeah, yeah. These they, three, yeah. your pointer finger, middle finger, and ring finger. Right. And then I severed uh, the nerves and the tendons in my thumb, and I can't use my thumb. So they're on there, but yeah. they're not functional. No. So basically, you got a pinky yeah. on that hand that works. Right. And aesthetically, it looks pretty cool. You know, I mean, it's, they did a, I think, you know, the healing process was really remarkable. But... Coincidentally, you realize at this point you could put a guitar slide on your pinky, which just so happens to be the perfect way to play a 1931 National Resonator guitar, which, by a twist of fate, you have lying on your shelf as as payment for a home repair job you did 30 years ago. Yeah, that took a little while, you know, because it, 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 it took about maybe a month and a half before the swelling went down enough that I could even put one on. And um, when I did, it was very painful just to having that on my finger. But <laughs> what made it worth it for me was the first time that I did that I slid the glass across the strings and I was making notes or you know I don't want to say it was noise it was tones coming off of it a couple days later I was thinking you know I'm gonna try this again you know I mean then I cradled it and I was able to you know slide it a little bit more and then I kept doing that for about four or five days and then I started finger picking and that's how I got back into the um, into the music scene. From WYPR in Baltimore, this is The Signal. I'm Aaron Hankin here in studio with 61-year-old John Decker and his 1931 National Resonator guitar. Mr. Decker's latest musical project is with a Baltimore musician several years his junior, uh, Adam Trice of the Baltimore Graveyard Country Band Red Sammy. Adam is here in studio with us as well. And uh, Adam, talk to me about how you guys ended up crossing paths in the first place. I knew of John Decker uh, from the artist community and, and some former projects he was involved in um, with his resonator guitar, and it you know, was appealing to me, and it was in the back of my head for a couple of years. In uh, 2009, um, I had the opportunity to go down to North Carolina and South Carolina on a mini trip as Appalachian bluegrass country, and our style of music at the time, we were um, very limited on the, the musicians we were taking down. I went down with a cello player and a bass player, and I um, just reached out to John Decker um, through a common friend and just asked him, um, would you be interested in coming on the road with us with your, with your resonator guitar? He agreed to come down, and since then, him and I have been, have been working and crafting new songs together, especially his guitar uh, on our newer stuff is, is more like the lead instrument. Um, we, we don't have electric guitar in our recordings. His resonator guitar and his way of playing, it complements the lyrics so well that you don't need to have the electric guitar. You don't need to have you know, organs or anything like that. You can do it just with his, his instrument. Well, I want to listen to uh, this most recent recording, this new CD that you guys put together, uh, and we'll do that in just a minute. But first, Decker, i got to ask you, I mean, obviously, Adam was impressed with you and heard your playing and wanted to get you into the fold of this thing. What did you think about these young, gruff folks <laughs> and their graveyard country and getting asked to take this road trip with them? How'd that sit with you? Well, first of all, I was honored that he, he would even consider me, um, you know, because uh, it, it was still all relatively new to me, the music scene and, you know, just being connected to musicians and artists. And then, then when he asked me to go on a road trip, I was really excited about it, I think just for the experience more than you know what I was going to learn musically. And then when he gave me the songs that he wanted me to learn, I mean, I really struggled with it. I mean, I had a difficult time, you know, with his phrasing, his um, different rhythms. And so I had to really listen. Instead of trying to learn the songs, I just had to listen to his music. And that's when I, I was able to wrap my mind around his poetry. You know, I, I found agreement with his voice, w with the guitar. But he's got a he's got the sweetest voice, doesn't oh, totally, he? Totally, yeah, man. I mean, <laughs> as know, we're about to hear, you'd never guess it. <laughs> yeah, we got <laughs> we got we got total agreement. That's that's for sure. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and give this a listen. Adam Trice, uh, 